When's the last time you had something fixed rather than replacing it with a new item? which seems to be the way of things now. A Gold Coast group wants your help to set up a repair cafe to fix items rather than throw them out and buy the newest, latest edition. Uh, the, this Saturday is, in fact, International Repair Day. A few Gold Coasters want to add to the already 1,500 repair cafes that exist around the world. They also want to do something that I think is a very, very good idea and create a library for tools. The anti-waste warrior behind all of this is with me in the studio. His name is David Painter. Good on you, David. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me come in. Why do you want to set up these two separate and distinct things? Let's start with the repair cafes first. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm passionate about reducing waste. Um, everything that we have in our house and consume has an embodied energy behind it. And that embodied energy comes from the manufacturer and the transport and the storage and the packaging. And so therefore, by making sure that we have extend the use of the life of the things that we have rather than just the, the, the linear model of take, make, waste, throw it away. Um, by keeping things in circulation for longer, um, we get better use and life of all of those items and reduces that waste heading to landfill. I, I suppose having a tool library is an extension further of this idea. You can, uh, there's, I was just explaining to you off air that I've got a shed full of tools that are perfectly useful that I really only needed for one discrete job at the time. They don't get used, but someone else can take them for most, all I care. Yeah, most definitely. Like Tool libraries are often called, called lending libraries of things because we lend more than just tools. It can be camping gear, sporting equipment, sewing machines, household kitchen items. What works really well is those items that are extremely but only occasionally useful. Mm. So it's things that you sort of think, well, I really need that, but I can't afford to buy it, but maybe I'll hire it. And if that's not available, well, where can I borrow it? So this is where a lending library or a tool library of things gives you the option for a small annual subscription. You can then have access to all of these resources, and it allows us to have all that items that are cluttering up the back of the cupboard and creating you know, waste and space in the house that uh, we can lend them and keep them in use more. The amount of orbital sanders, perhaps, and uh, uh, I don't know, little things, there'd be plenty of things that just get used once or twice. Most definitely. Like some research has been done, and they reckon the average household drill gets used for 13 minutes in its entire life. <laughs> and it's like, and two, it's like for those who aren't you know, tradies and things. We, we tend to sort of go to the shop and we, we think, well, we're only going to use this occasionally, so I'll buy something cheap. Yes. And something cheap is usually something that doesn't last. And it's obviously with planned obsolescence, they're often not made to last. So there's a lot of waste that goes with that. So maybe if we bought one good quality drill and we shared it between a lot of people, well, then that's going to have a better use of the resources and we're going to have a better quality item to use. You're making longer. far too much sense, David Pater, this afternoon. Um, how would these things work? Tell us about the nitty gritty of them. What would be the ins and outs of both uh, both concepts? Yeah, well, I'll start with the repair cafe because mm. that is more than likely what we'll get up and going first. We're aiming to have our first one uh, very early in the new year. It's getting close to Christmas. Everyone gets busy, so we're looking for the first one next year. This works where volunteer fixers, members of the community who have simply have skills to offer, we come together in a pop-up um, an arrangement, normally in like a community centre or commercial premises, and then members of the community can bring in their household items that have gone into disrepair or have broken or need some repair, and the volunteer fixers will help you fix it together. And this is the big idea. is It's not a drop-off service. You actually sit there together, and that mender or fixer has normally got knowledge that they can share and often it can be an intergenerational sharing of knowledge because quite often our more senior residents um, in the community have got all of those years of experience mm. and they grew up in an environment where they did repair and care for their items so they can often sit with you and actually show you step by step on how to do it because quite often people just need that little bit of help to sort of go oh yeah I know how to do that I just needed someone to show me mm. Uh, and that way we can there. So therefore we've got... Uh, There's hope for things. me and my soldering iron skills yet. Yeah, most definitely. It's terrible with a soldering so iron. <laughs> and, and it covers all things. It can be, you know, sewing and mending, mm. um, children's toys, fixing a bike, um, household items, electrical items. So it's not just tools, but it covers across virtually anything from your home that you can pick up and carry in. We would have a go at helping together you repair it. 
Great idea. Great idea. Uh, the Tool Library, tell, talk us through the, the guts of that. Yeah, so Tool Library, is, um, there's some great ones running in the um, Brisbane, uh, Sydney and Melbourne, so we want to get the first one here going on the Gold Coast. Now, that needs a physical premises because that is actually a place. Uh, so we're looking for a premises to set that up. And this is where we have a lot of uh, donated equipment. I've already got some good equipment being donated so far, you know, hand tools, power tools, um, some kitchen appliances, a unicycle, a surfboard, um, six-person tent, lots of really <laughs> good stuff's coming in. So we set up in a, in a premises. People will then buy a annual subscription um, with uh, reduced rates for you know seniors, um, unemployed, uh, pension card holders, and that sort of thing. And they can come in just like a book library, but we just lend other items. So they come in, borrow an item for a week, use it for what they need it, and then bring it back, rather than having to go out and buy that item. Um, and then, you know, wasted resources or wasted storage space in your house. I'm seeing a closure of a loop here too. The tool library, I'm fair people are probably thinking, well, who's going to maintain these things and make sure they're in good repair? Well, the repairers that are volunteering their time and have upskilled other people to look after stuff and on and on it goes. Exactly. It's all part of that circular economy and that uh, shared collaborative consumption. This is all in its initial phases, uh, David. Uh, What do you need to get things going to really give it a kick start and a shove along yeah so we've sort of been in the last couple of months just sort of like testing the concept we put it out there to the community and the response has been overwhelmingly yes this is great let's get on with it so now we're looking for the people to actually help make it happen i've got a small team of dedicated people who are out there in the community talking to people spreading out information spreading flyers but now we need some key people who have got one or two hours a week spare to come and join the team and help with the next step. It's like a like a business startup, really, just a small scale micro business startup. So we need people with all sorts of skills, admin, communication. You don't have to know anything about tools. You don't need to know anything about fixing. If you're good with people, then that's a really great skill as well. So we'd have to people with a little bit of time on their hands, and it doesn't have to be much uh, to come and join us and get involved. What a great way to have a practical involvement in something that would, well, it concerns a lot of people, waste, this idea of waste. We see the response to our War on Waste program on ABC TV and the like, and a lot of people say, oh, but, but what can I do? Okay, I'm not using plastic bags as much as I used to. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something, but here's an opportunity just to, to get involved in a movement. Oh, most definitely. And this movement is growing dramatically. The um, share and repair movement around the world is growing dramatically. That There's... number, 1,500, there are 1,500 repair cafes operating around the world. Yeah, that's correct. Started in the Netherlands in 2009 um, and since then it's just grown and blossomed. Plus there's other like Fixit initiatives who may focus specifically on electronics or some others. So you can kind of, you know, more than double that number when you include all the other types of fix and repair movements which are all volunteer driven that are spreading around the world. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, Support from council or other organisations? Yeah, I haven't approached um, many yet because we've still sort of been in that um, early sort of stage but once we get incorporated as a non-profit organisation we'll certainly be going out and uh, talking to them and seeing where we can fit in and because there's a lots of community centres um, and other sort of spaces which aren't necessarily always being used and I'm a big believer in sharing of resources and that can also be physical resources like buildings um, because the repair cafes and tool libraries we're not open all the time so we don't want to occupy a space and then waste that space it yes. needs to be used other times we just need you know 70 square meters or so where which we can co-share with other people and often these types of community initiatives work well when you bunch a number of them together indeed a little network starts Correct. to grow uh, how can people find out more get involved get in contact yeah well the best way to is our facebook page which is Gold Coast Tool Library um, on the Facebook network, find us there, or via email, which is gctoollibrary at gmail.com. You can speak to David Painter directly. Correct. (laughs) Good on you. Thank you for coming in. I wish you every success. It's a great idea. No, thank you very much for having us here.